Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Amateur Business Show. My name is Chris Petron, and today I'm here with Tammy Downing of Out of the Box Tours. Now, before we get growing here with Tammy, um, I'm going to do a quick rundown of our resources page over on nhbusinessshow.com slash resources. So what you have is I'm putting together a list of resources for everybody. So we've got lead pages. Um, it's a great way to build landing pages for your business. It's a fantastic resource. Um, self-authoring. So one of the businesses I sponsor. Um, it's a great resource for businesses to kind of like work on the inside of yourself and to get better as you go um, bigger as far as your business. Then we've got um, a lot of our Amazon services. Uh, project quoting if you're a business. That's a fantastic if you're like landscaping things like that you'll hear me talk about them a lot and so we have a lot of resources available to businesses that as i grow when i pull on new sponsors and affiliates these are services that i believe will help you as a business and that's why i take them on so go check out our page see if there's anything that works for you um everything that goes there helps support the show which in turn i turn around to help businesses in new hampshire so take a moment look at what we got if you have any suggestions, feel free to reach out with, with those as well. I'm always happy to hear about other businesses and places I need to approach to help everyone else. So thank you guys so much, and welcome to the show, Tammy. Amazing. <laughs> how you doing, Tammy? Good, how are you? Good. So it's been about a year. I looked it up, and actually I watched our old interview today. Um, it was Feb January 17th. Wow. Was the last time we spoke, so... It's been a little over a year now, so we have probably a whole lot to talk about. So, for yeah. those that don't know who you are, let's give a little breakdown of your company real quick, and we'll go from there. All right. So, I am the owner of Out of the Box Tours, right in Manchester, and and <laughs> we <laughs> and we do tours in and around Southern New Hampshire, all over really. But I'm trying to make my focus more. Um, New Hampshire and Southern New Hampshire based. Um, Concord North has a lot of great stuff, but so does Concord South. So I'm trying to get more tourism down here and um, support. I'm, I'm committed to supporting smaller businesses. So um, integrated in my tours are, um, you know, if it's a food tour, we'll go to the mom and pop type of establishment as opposed to, you know, a bigger chain. Um, and you know, with any tour that I do, you know, if if um, if it's a little mom and pop shop, I kind of I kind of like to support them. So, and in turn, they like to support me. So, it, it yeah. what goes around comes around. That was very helpful. And <laughs> yeah. Talking about mom and pop shops, that's the thing I focus on the show as well. Mm -hmm. One, because they're easier to get on the show. Mm -hmm. like <laughs> Planet Fitness or someone. Yeah, really. Um, but I do like helping smaller companies, and it's kind of a area that. I can really help people, and so I address that. Um, I also have a thing for like independent restaurants. Yes, I, I love that. So it's probably something you probably know well about mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but oh man, something about like yeah, Red Red Robin's great, and all these places yeah. are fantastic. But you know, driving over to a place no one's heard of because they only have one little shop and it's theirs and. Those can be, you can find some real gold mines there. <laughs> and it's like a hole in the wall. Like yeah. people will say, it's a hole in the wall, and you're like. I'm there, like, because yeah. usually they're passionate about what they do, they're good at it, you know. It's like there's there's that whole demo, like that whole thing right there that makes it that much better. Yeah. Where yeah, you go to Red Robin and it's like they have a manual as to how to make their burgers, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You there's no passion. Heard, you ever heard of Taco Biondo? No. Okay, so it's that hole in the wall. This reminded me because the first time we walked in there, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know what to make of this. It's fantastic. <laughs> where is it? Hillsboro. Every, uh, every time I go out towards Hillsboro, we're in. We're going is there. it a standalone thing? No, it's it's in a little like a little old outlet mall type deal looking thing. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, you can look it up. It's the only one. Yeah, no, so. I mean, it's just. And yeah, it's just like it's tucked in this little place, and it's little, very narrow, long restaurant yeah it's fantastic yeah those are the best ones <laughs> yeah. or ones that just open you know like yeah. they could they might have a couple couple locations you know what i mean like yeah. but you know like i don't mind that either you know mm -hmm. i don't that's that's fine with me there's yeah. that bonfire that's downtown i think they have another nice. one you know and every everybody they they have lots of beer and lots of bacon <laughs> they have a happy hour with bacon yeah. i think every night you know or 
a lot of nights. So, yeah, I like to support that kind of thing. New new people coming in and um, small businesses. So, yeah. and women. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> like to support women-owned businesses too. Well, I get that a lot here as well. Mm -hmm. um, I say all the time, like my demographic, kind of like the guests who come on the show are typically like thirties and forties women who are. <laughs> I'm not talking about you too. <laughs> like, I'm generally like 30, 40 women, kind of in mm -hmm. that area, just getting out of the work field because they want to start their own businesses to try to work for other people, or they're on the border of they kind of have a job, but they do this as well. Yes, I know trying, a lot. They're trying to grow mm -hmm. it so they can leave. Like that's that's a lot of what I get, especially for guests. So yeah. Kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, because personally, I was in the healthcare field for almost twenty years and always knowing that I want to do something different mm -hmm. and not quite knowing what it was, knowing if I got another job in healthcare, I'd still have the same problems. Yeah. So like, what's the sense of leaving where you are and yeah. you know, like all your benefits that you accumulated. So that's kind of how I got into this because I, it was just a total career change and I jumped in with both feet. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's been great. It really has been great. You know, I get, I get the opportunity to meet a lot of new people and Occasionally, um, a lot of times I'm traveling all over the country too. Sometimes with it, so get to go to Vegas this okay. year. Yeah. I'm gonna be doing a training out there, so I will be a certified Vegas tour guide <laughs> um, in Bryce Canyon and um, Zion National Park and Tucson. I'm gonna be heading there, and all of those I'm gonna be doing in five days. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Whew. And then, um, yeah, and I'll be headed to Savannah and Atlanta in a few months. So um, I do tours down there as well. Um, but like I said, I want to bring it back here because I like to sleep in my own bed too. Yeah, yeah, makes <laughs> and, and I want to, I want to support local businesses. I mean, I'll do that other stuff cause it's fun, you know, and, and people pay me to do it. So of course I'm going to do it, but being back at home is uh, more sweet, more sweet, more betterer. <laughs> more betterer. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> So, this is actually funny. I had a, one of the New Hampshire reps on here a month ago or so, and we were talking about some of the issues New Hampshire has. And one of them is kind of recreational. There's not a whole lot to do. Mm -hmm. So I thought of you again. I'm like, Aww. that's when I started like, okay, and you remember to ask her to come back on the show. Because there can be things to do. Mm -hmm. That's why I like your company, because I think it adds... Um, again to the tourism market which helps a lot and there needs to be things to do and if you don't know what to do asking a tour guide can help you <laughs> right right and yeah i get that a lot because especially um i have daughters who are in their 20s mm -hmm. and that's their biggest complaint if they want to do something different they have to go to boston yeah and i'm like i don't I mean, not that I don't want them to go to Boston. I'm not saying that there's anything against Boston, but why can't we have fantastic things to do here? So yeah, I have the ghost tours um, that I do in Manchester, Concord, and I'm working on one in Nashua. If anybody knows any haunted history in Nashua, let me know. <laughs> um, I have the booze and booze tours, which is like a haunted pub crawl, yeah. which is a lot of fun. So, you know, it's a little different. Um, I do have, I have this other event that I do. It's called the <laughs> the Tipsy Tournament. I know my names are wacky. I can't help it. Um, but it's kind of like bringing out your inner frat boy and having fun in games and, you know, the, the fun flip cup and beer pong type of games um, that we do at, at um, various um, bars and restaurants around the area. Um, and we have one tonight, actually, but <laughs> this probably won't air so <laughs> until later, yeah, right? All right, never mind. It's tonight. <laughs> um, it's dark brewing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And then, and then the other ways, like those are all walking tours, and um, I prefer van tours if you wanna if you don't wanna walk. I prefer van because it's a smaller, more intimate group. I can do bus tours and I have, I mean, that's, that's really where my training is, is with, you know, 55 people. And I've actually done a tour with eight buses before. Yes. <laughs> they were, um, seniors in high school from Danbury, Connecticut. 
yikes, eight buses na navigating Boston. It was just, whoa. <laughs> I'm sure that's an experience. Yeah, that was an experience, yes. So, um, yeah, 360 kids. <laughs> Wow. That's, a, that's, that's a lot of kids, just in general. Yeah. Around trying to help. For something like that, do you have like multiple tour guides, or is mm -hmm. it just so it is just like multiple tour guides, maybe per bus? Or what, there's one per bus. Um, yeah, and and usually it's it has to be a well-oiled machine. You have yeah. to have somebody on the inside that's very organized and and knows you know. But yeah, it's it's I usually will have one per bus because that just makes it easier and cleaner, and um, make sure that the drivers are trained in driving in and around Boston because yeah. that's really tr tricky to navigate. Um, but yeah, and, and trying to get these places to come up here, you know, they're like, so what's in Manchester? And I'm like, what is it? <laughs> we have the mill yard and we have. <laughs> that's the good, that's, again, back to the point we're making, like, there's stuff to do, but like, what is it? How It's not advertised very well. And that comes back to what I do, trying to help people get their word out. That's it, exactly, yeah. But like, like what do we do? Because I remember when I was, early 20s and I wanted to go do something I'm like well it's not a whole lot go to the bars <laughs> or go to the movies yeah really I mean honestly that's all they really have here yeah so I mean I offer you know a wide range of stuff not just tours I also have events um you know I just had an 80s themed murder mystery um, at the Falls Event Center on the Amoskeg traffic traffic circle and I'm going to be having um, another murder mystery at the Centennial Hotel in um, in Concord. It's um, it's twenties themed and it's kind of cool because that building, when as you're going into the basement of the Centennial Hotel, it almost looks like a speakeasy. So, Roaring Twenties kind of fits nicely. And um, I'm also working with various companies in and around the Mill Yard and downtown to bring other events to the area to um, give the young millennials and others, Gen X's, something to do. <laughs> so what type of things do you think New Hampshire could use, you know, as far as a, um, events, businesses, things like that to really to help in that area? Well, I think that, um, I, I know that there's a lot of event planning companies around. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that I, talk to the ones that own the the event companies it just seems like their focus is you know like bridal showers and and weddings and that's all well and good but you know we need um other things for the general public so a lot of a lot of the things that you see that are like the murder mysteries or if you see like a big gala you know like a big nice dinner with an auction or whatever it's usually geared to one industry or one you know whatever so i am trying to diversify and make these types of things available to everyone so and i think that that would help with the events is to is to make these things or the even the tours everything make them available to everyone not just a chosen few in a certain field or have who have certain interests okay okay yeah because i think it's something we need kind of like yeah. help out just across the board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I've always wanted to do something like this and, and you know, for years I was just talking the talk and now I get to walk the walk and, and I see these things come to fruition and it's kind of nice, you know, kind of nice to see all these people all get together and it's like, wow, this would have never happened if I hadn't planned this. So yeah. it's kind of cool. <laughs> so... Real quick, because we were talking about dad jokes beforehand. Oh, so dad hear, jokes. Hear a bad dad joke? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the Clydesdale give the pony a glass of water? Oh, no. Because he was a little horse. <laughs> but um, boom. <laughs> I wanted to get that on camera because it was ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, Chris, <laughs> your kids must be like going, ouch, all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty good, pretty good. dad jokes. <laughs> They're the greatest and the worst all at the same time. <laughs> so we, we had talked a little bit beforehand how it's just you running the tours and everything. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if we talked about last time, but about looking to grow the company or kind mm -hmm. of where we're looking to go down the road. Are you still looking to bring on other tour guides eventually? <clears throat> I, the business. Yes, I do have um, one um, 
one person right now <laughs> that will pick up my slack if I'm ever sick or if I'm ever, um, cause I'm on the road a lot and sometimes yeah. they kind of overlap. So, um, his name is, um, Duke Mulberry and he is a local, um, comedian. And so he's going to be coming in for some of my tours. I'll be training him pretty soon. And yeah, that's the goal is to get some more folks in and to, um, just start training them up so we can get feet on the ground and get out there and offer these tours instead of just, you know, one every few weeks, you know, have it a little more consistent because yeah. it's, it's tough when you're, you're the only person yeah. <laughs> doing you're that stuff. Do you're very active, so yeah. going to different states and then while you're training, and, <laughs> you know, that could, you know, because while you're doing that, you're not making money as well. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, balance of things to be going on there. Yeah, lots of balls in the air at the same yeah. time. And it's like, whoo. So, yeah, but I'm getting there. I'm yeah. getting there. So, yeah, I got some I got some good people. I'm actually looking for um, particularly um, young people who are in some type of talent, you know, talent type of entertainment industry. Um, you know, actors, comedians, um, what have you, because... Um, and I'll take anybody, you know, as long as, as, <laughs> as long as they're not afraid, because you typically these folks, they're not afraid to speak in public and quite often, you know, they can memorize a script. I mean, not that it's scripted, but you know, you have to know yeah, your stories. Points, yeah. yeah. And, um, and also, um, charming. You know, um, I can't have somebody that's afraid to talk in public and puts their head in the sand come out and work for me. So that's why I'm kind of looking for people in the entertainment realm of things to come on board and help me out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's taken off, so I got to do something pretty soon. <laughs> I like that. And that's a pretty big uh, difference between last year and now. It's yeah. Just, it's why I kind of like every year or so kind of getting old businesses back on because we can see the progression of these businesses over time, which is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you went from being a just single me. person, like whole rodeo, to now, you know, we have a person, a couple people about to come work for you, and, like, we're growing, and the next year, you know, millions of dollars in tours. Oh, you know, yeah, that would be <laughs> nice. And, uh... <laughs> But, you know, it's good to see that type of growth because then I can start asking you fun questions where we talk about, like, how we're going through this and how we're doing it. So oh, when, yeah. When a brand new person off the street wants to come in, you know, they kind of, they have someone with some experience to help guide them. And that helps you with your, um, I can't always forget the word, but, you know, your reputation and because mm -hmm. you're, you're the go-to person. Right. You answer for this other thing. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm the go-to person. Yeah. Um. I know, and, and I didn't try to reinvent the wheel or anything like that, you know, I just kind of, I stuck with one thing for a while, and um, and that happened to be the ghost tours in Manchester, and then just kind of added one at a time, just like slow and steady. Um, this time last year, I think I was, I had just the ghost tour, and I was developing the Concord ghost, so I had the ghost tour in Manchester, I was developing the one in Concord, and then... Um, just kind of every six or eight weeks or so, once I got one down pat, I would add something else and see how it see how it works. Some don't work. Yeah. I mean, you know, and you have to realize that there's going to be some failures, yeah. you know. But, I mean, what are you going to do? Not everybody's going to want to do whatever it is, you know. Or it might be that I'm not advertising in the right place, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too. You have to be okay with what doesn't work because then you can just put that aside and, and move on yeah. you know and do what does work which is my ghost tours and booze and booze <laughs> oh yeah alcohol and ghosts always generally go pretty well you know yeah yeah i figure i'll give them spirits so they'll be able to see spirits <laughs> so, uh, so okay let's see if there's a process of it. what's a good process for making a tour he said some don't work some do mm -hmm. like do you have a like a, a system to like, hey, maybe I should do this, put this together and make a tour out of it. Like, what's your process look like? I know. It's kind of funny that you say that because I will see things like I, I peruse the Internet all the time. Like I'm on there just kind of looking to see what the trends are and see what it is that um, is popular. But I'm looking at bigger cities. I'm looking at Boston and I'm looking at Chicago and I'm looking at, um, you know, 
California and Orlando. And what they're doing there that's working, I'm like, all right, how can I get what they're doing on a big scale into Manchester and the greater, greater Manchester area on a smaller scale? Hmm. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I do. You yeah. know, I, I try to see what's popular and yeah. And it's been, you know, like I said, it doesn't always work, but that's okay. You know, there's, there's going to be, um, things that, that tank. <laughs> well, yeah, and the, like I said, there's always going to be those, even if you have a really good one after a while, it might just wear itself out. And that's the other thing. So you always have to be inventive and, and, um, creative when you're coming up with the tours. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why I have some real creative types of you know, names for these tours. I mean, booze and booze, you know, I have one coming up um, March 19th called um, Maple Sugar No Spice. <laughs> so we're going to be going up into northern New Hampshire. We're going to be doing a maple sugar tour and doing it the old fashioned way, not with all the lines and pipes. It's going to be we're going to tap a tree and have a bucket under the tree. That's and cool. yeah, because, the, you know, the old ways are kind of going away mm -hmm. and um, we're actually going to take a horse and, uh, you know, a carriage ride out to this area to where we're going to be doing this. And we're going to see it from start to finish. We're going to we're going to, um, you know, haul it in and learn how they do that and how they separate it out and how they, you know, do the whole process. Cool. And then we're going to eat pancakes. Pancakes are awesome. <laughs> pancakes are good. Yes. So, yeah, the, the my folks, because a lot of times when you go to these places, it's just this is what happens, but we're actually going to do and help. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Yeah. So do you take outside uh, recommendations from people? Of course I do. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, it's funny that you say that because that's kind of my niche a little bit. People will call me and say, I want to do a tour. I'm interested in A, B, C, and D. This is my budget. And, you know, I can create a tour around that. So I prefer that, actually. <laughs> cool. So, this is what I was thinking about. Oh, here we go. Uh, since you're a one-person kind of thing, now maybe one or two, uh, if you want help creating tours, like, reach out to my audience here, <laughs> and... Uh, Come up with some cool ideas and we'll, yeah. we'll try to do something. <laughs> yeah, if you have any ideas as to, you know, what kind of tours you want to see, absolutely. Reach yeah. out to me, Out of the Box Tours on Facebook yeah. um, or touringtammy at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah. I could go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's good because I like using, you know, the power of many people over mm -hmm. just one because they might know venues that you don't know about. Businesses right. Don't know and, we can create some really cool stuff to really help. You know, exactly, you know. exactly. And I'm actually right now, um, believe it or not, I'm planning on my fall events. Oh, yeah. And last year I had a few fall events that were of a haunted theme. No more ghosts, I know. Um, but the, I'm looking for like haunted houses or haunted yeah. venues where I could bring a group of people in with my team of paranormal investigators cool. and my, you know, I have videographers and photographers on my team as well. And we all kind of go in and we do an investigation just like they do on TV. So you get to do what you see those, those guys doing. And the last one I did, I mean, we got some fantastic stuff going on there. Um, it happened to be in Winchin in Massachusetts at their historical society, and we had access to two buildings. So one of the buildings, I just had very few people in there, and we had it like as an isolation area. And it's um, Winchin used to be known as Toy Town, mm -hmm. and that's where they had a bunch of their toys was in this other building. And when the folks were over there, they would hear like the rocking horses rocking even though nobody was there. They would hear um, like the toy xylophone. So people that go on my things, I mean, I, mean, I can't guarantee an experience, but it's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, I didn't hear it. I'm kind of sad because I was working, yeah. um, but you know, they actually had something happen. So, and that's what it's all about. You yeah. know, just kind of having fun, checking it out, see what's going on and take yeah. it from there. It's like the perfect intro to a horror movie. So. Doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not in some in some camp like off in the woods <laughs> with a lake and. <laughs> yeah. 
That would be cool, though. Yeah. Five scenes directing all the things and, and the rocking horse. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know. But yeah, they're like, because they were in a room full of rocking horses, and they could hear it, that rocking sound, but yeah. nothing was moving. So, yeah. you know. Cool. Yeah, and they had it on, the, you know, they were they were videoing with their thing, and I, I was looking, like, all right, somebody got their little foot on there? Nope, I didn't see it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, so, it's different. When it comes to tour guides, mm-hmm. I was going to talk about this earlier, but we got onto something else, probably one of my stupid jokes. But, uh, Squirrel. <laughs> um, you mentioned the entertainment industry, and they make Know, decent tour guides and stuff. Yes. Do you think a lot of the success of being a tour guide kind of comes from your personality? Yes. I have been on many tours. I, I love to take tours. Um, some of the best tours I've been on have been the ones where the people are not, you can't be dry. You have to, you have to have a personality of some sort and you have to be entertaining in some way. Um, a really good example is the duck tours in Boston. I don't know if anybody's ever been on those, but um, they are, these folks are entertainers. I mean, and, and the facts that they're giving are, I, I haven't seen any wrong facts because I know Boston very well. So, but they are entertainers, you know, as their second profession or their first profession and duck tours is their second profession. So yeah, I think that, that you don't want to dry, you know, boring that you're not going to retain anything yeah. and, and it's going to reflect in, you know, your retention of, of guests. I have, I have groupies <laughs> that come on my tours over and over again, even the same tours. I'm like, what are you doing here again? Oh, it's just so much fun. I'm like, okay. You know, cause they enjoy it, yeah. you know? And if I were dry and boring, then they wouldn't come back. Yeah. Which I think anyone who knows you <laughs> knows that you're a very interesting person. Aw, thanks. And, uh, so, cause we'll, I'll be going on your tours here next month. Yeah. I took me a year to do this. But <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, uh, I'm charging them extra. Yeah. <laughs> this is a late fee for you guys. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I can definitely see, because that's kind of, a, that was kind of my tip for, like, newcomers into the industry. Like, practice just being honest and true and fun. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people, especially new people, probably have a, difficulty talking in front of crowds yes it's one of the fears people have um so if you want to get into the tour guide industry <laughs> right you right you probably want to practice you know being fun and open and you probably don't have to be crazy and like no and no that, be fun and be out there and be willing to talk and right and charming practice. you know yeah. and not and, and no introverts you know extroverts i need extroverts and there's there was a study i took statistics in college and there's a statistic that says that 46% of people are afraid of dying, but 62% of people are afraid of public speaking. So that means how many people would rather die than speak in public? <laughs> well, I, forget, I forget who I heard. I was listening to someone. He, he, you brought that quote up, so it made me think of it. Um, <laughs> as he said, it's probably not true. Because if you put a gun to their head and said, you're going to talk in public. Most of them probably will. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, I know that. But you know, the thought of it, yeah, though. Yeah, the yeah. thought of it. It's like, well, we're going to die anyway, but I don't have to talk in public. <laughs> so I, I knew people that are petrified of mm-hmm. speaking. And I'm the, kind of the same way. I'm, I'm introverted. I'm very, I'm yeah, very shy are. and down to earth. But doing what I do is easy. So I kind of do that. <laughs> well, yeah, because you don't really have an audience. Like, you have an audience, but you don't see your audience. Yeah, it's very controlled. It's mm-hmm. one-on-one. I can do that well. That's easy. Yeah. And, but when it comes to crowds, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. yeah. So then you hire me. I can come in. Yeah. <laughs> I could do that. It's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so anything else? Um, we have around about 20, 30 minutes here. It's pretty good. Um Thing, events you have coming up, things besides the one tonight. I know, <laughs> um, really. Things to talk about, any points you want to give to new people or 
you know, guests who are looking for something to do. It's yeah. Just, I guess, free conversation. I know, really. So on April 11th is my first ghost tour scheduled for Manchester, my first public one. So if you want to um, go ahead and order your tickets, they're only $16. And you would get that through my um, webpage is the best place to go. And that's... Um, I mean, my Facebook page, I'm sorry. Um, my web page is still in production. It's like, it looks like a kindergartner did it. So don't look there. <laughs> <laughs> for now, for now. So um, yeah, go on to my Facebook page and I have all my events listed there, everything coming up. I have the ones, all the ghost tours. I don't just have the one April 11th. That just happens to be the first one. I have um, a lot of booze and booze tours coming up. My first one in Manchester being April 14th. And um, very many um, food tours. And I have one that's called Spirits, Chocolate, and Cheese. Um, so that one's going to be a lot of fun. I think that one's May 4th. I don't know, somewhere around there. And um, I also have um, the Treat Mom Expo on May 19th, where we're going to have um, experts and professionals in all kinds of wonderful fields coming to the Falls Event Center to do um, a day of pampering for mom. So there's going to be um, what I'm looking for. Hopefully there'll be nail techs, hair people, massage therapists, acupuncturists, um, people that can help you with your wardrobe, tell you what's going to look best on you, makeup artists, um, you name it, it's going to be there. Oh, I even have chocolate and I have wine there. So um, yeah, come on out to that. That's May 19th from 2 until 6 um, at the Falls Event Center. And just keep on looking at that at that page because that's where all my stuff is. And I add new things every day. Every day. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> But it's good. It's good. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, kind of not just now, but like 15 minutes ago, she gave a good link of everywhere you could reach her. So I'll just put those in the description so people can have to rehash all of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> we'll go from there. And uh, I'll, I'll give you guys an update after I take the tour on how good that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll go from there. So thank you for being on the show again, Tim. It's thank you. Fun. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually excited to see your business growing the way it has is, has, is, has been. <laughs> And I'm uh, looking forward to doing this again in a year or so. Yeah. Seeing how you're doing. Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> I've enjoyed it as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, as we roll off here, I'm going to give you a quick word from our sponsors. And everyone have a good day. So if you are a lawn care professional, uh, if you're into pesticides, snow removal, anything to do with the outside of a house, what you need is project quoting. So project quoting offers... And a super easy way to, again, quote <laughs> um, your potential customers. And you can put it right on your website so they can do quotes of your services without even having you come out to see them. Um, it offers a powerful tool to let you use a map to look at the outside of a property, and you can get a really good estimate of the property right from there. It links up to QuickBooks. It does all this fantastic stuff. Um, so if this is something that you've been struggling with yourself, there's no, no need to struggle anymore. You can get right in there and uh, set this up for your company. Now, I'm going to put the link in here for you. It's nhbusinessshow.com slash project quoting. And head right, right over to that link. Take a look at it. Uh, they offer a 14-day free trial. So take it for a test run. See how powerful the system is for you and your company. If it's a good fit, then jump on in. If it's not, you know, no hassles. So nhbusinessshow.com slash project quoting.